first tour of the year. Yeah, it's coming up soon, isn't it? So what do we need? What? Um, well, the bike's in pretty good shape. Um, it was not long service, so we don't need to worry about any of that. I think we've got another 8,000 kilometers for next service. Tires are pretty much brand new as well. There's tons of tread on them. And so, yeah, I think we're pretty much ready to go with that. Mm. Shadow's all good, but what accessories and stuff? Because I know you're thinking of a few little additions. Yeah, there's been times when it's been handy to navigate with the phone at times. Mm -hmm. And it would be nice to have that charging as well all the time. Yeah, so that's a good thing. I think we need to look at maybe a phone mount. Like something over here, maybe. Yeah, something to go on the handlebars. That would be good. Okay, and then is it going to be like charged on the battery or...? Uh, yeah, you can link them straight to the battery, but I've actually been thinking that um, I wanted some sort of power distribution model so that when you turn the engine off, it cuts all the power to the accessories because sometimes like with a heated vest, if we stop the bike to park, um, just to I don't know, have a chat or something, mm -hmm. the vest is still draining the battery and yeah, some people have had some troubles with drained batteries, so I think if we can find something that cuts the power to the accessories when the engine off, that'll be great. So other than that, I think we're good to go. Oh, yeah, just looking there, the handlebar grips are getting a bit worn. Oh, um, they are, aren't they? I know, he's only done, well, he's done 25,000 kilometers now, but yeah, they are showing signs of wear. And I remember on the R1200, to replace the entire grip um. was rather expensive, so I want to avoid that on this yeah. one. Yeah, um, well, that's because you cut the wire, didn't you, when you were trying to replace them to yourself? Yeah, I don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, apart from that, that's all we need to do, I think, for Shadow. Yeah, I need to do some route planning, um, and I also need to start packing. I think our bags are at the back, right, in the boxes. Yeah, I need to boxes. fish them out. Need to get them, and then I think I've also been toying with the idea of maybe airbag vests for us. Yeah, we saw the, the Heelite stand, didn't we, at the, yeah. the Moto Festival. I was really impressed. They are impressive, yeah. So I think maybe we should go to the showroom or maybe do a bit more research on them and see if that's a good addition for us for the tours. Yeah, it's a good idea. I think they do like a tethered version and an electronic version, but I'm not sure which one will be best for us. But so. Okay, so that's phone mount, a few accessories added. Uh, you're going to do the wiring, route planning, basic packing. Anything else? I think that's pretty much it. We just uh, I think we need to make an appointment with Helite as well. Okay. Because they... I don't think the showroom's open all the time in Switzerland, so it's uh, okay, no problem an then. Where we can go there, so yeah. Right, let's do it. So for the past few little trips we've done around Switzerland, we've been using the Calimoto app, and I can honestly say we've fallen in love with it. I still use Google Maps for finding points of interest and cool places along the way, but in terms of getting from point A to point B in the best way possible, we've been using Calimoto, so I'm gonna show you quickly how I use it on the computer. To start, I'm gonna use Google Maps. So you can see here, I've already made a map and this will be on our website with all of the points that we wanna see while we're in Corsica. And I've done my usual technique that I used on the last video to show you how to add in all the little points along the way. So I'm gonna take these points and go over onto Calimoto. There is Trip Planner here in the top. And then you can literally start putting in your pins. So I'm gonna start in Bastia in Corsica. So I'm going to type in Bastia and it will come up straight away with your point. And then let's say I want to go all the way to Ajeco, which I'm not going to do in one day, but just for this. And it will pick out the perfect route for you. And it also gives you little photos that other people have taken and put in of some of the best roads. So from there, you can also click on this small red button, which gives you different options. So it's either the motorway or you can even make it even more windy, which for Corsica I think is windy enough for us. So what I'm gonna do is make a route for every single day. And then if you click my rides here at the top, it's gonna to come up with all the different routes and rides that we've already planned. And as soon as you create these routes, so this is our day one of the Corsica tour that we're gonna do, it's immediately on your phone. So I can go directly on the Cali Moto app on my phone and click planned rides. And all of the rides that I've made on the computer are already there waiting for us and we can use the app to navigate, which is something I really love about the Calimoto system. So you might have noticed this in the backdrop, we have got the connected ride navigator for our next tour and I have already opened it and I have already had a little play with it and so far we're really impressed and I wanna show you how we can get the Calimoto or any of your route navigation onto here in the most simplest way.
So I've plugged in the sat nav and I'm gonna satisfyingly peel off <laughs> the little screen protector. I've plugged it in and it comes up straight away as the connected ride navigator. It has an internal shared storage. Double click on that and you'll get four folders. You just click on routes and then you can drag all of your GPX files literally in one click directly over onto the sat nav and immediately within a few seconds of powering it on, swipe up, I'm gonna click navigation, then point to point, start, routes, and there they all are. How cool is that? It's so much easier than Basecamp or anything I've actually used. And this whole um, navigation system links up directly with your phone where you can rename all of the routes and you can also save them as well. So now all of the routes are on the navigator. I'm basically done with route planning. I just wanted to let you all know as well that just like we did with the Heading North Hall, we'll be keeping all of the links to our routes in the description so you can follow along exactly where we go. SP Connect have sent us the following things. So let's see what we've got. We've got the mount here, which we're going to mount straight onto the handlebars. We, it's paired with the anti-vibration module, which is going to protect the phone from the vibrations of the bike. And it's also the charging module as well. We've got the phone case, which I've already attached to the phone here. And what I like about this is it has the MagSafe on it. So it's compatible with all our other accessories in the house. So we don't need to keep taking the case on and off. We've also got the 12 volt cable here, which we're going to wire straight into the bike. But I mentioned before I was looking for something to handle these accessories, a power distribution module. And I found this one from Heeltech. It's called the Thunderbox. And you can put up to 10 accessories on the same box. It protects against surges and overloads. But what I really like about it is when you turn the engine off the bike, it also cuts the power to the accessories that are connected to this. So let's go and fit them. Let's install the SP Connect to the bike. See what we've got here. We need that. So I'm gonna put it straight onto this side of the handlebars because it clears the yoke here on the handlebars. And it's such a, a wide handle that we don't actually need the adapters. So we're gonna put that straight on. They do supply you with this little self-adhesive thing, which I think is gonna protect the paint on the handlebars in case you wanna take it off later. So put that on. You get one shot at this because you get one. It's quite simple. It's just a little screw that goes onto that. And I'll pop that on there. And I'm going to need to put the phone on just to make sure the position's right. Next, I'm going to install the anti-vibration module, which is going to give me a little bit more clearance on there as well. So first, I'm going to put the phone on just to make sure I've got the right orientation when I put this on. And I think we need that little adapter that goes on there as well. So I think that's pretty much level there. I'll take that phone back off and then tighten up that screw. I just want to see if I can actually see the phone when I put the tank bag on. I'm not sure if we're going to use the tank bag for the next trip, but I want it to be in the right place for the next time we use it. So I'll put the phone on and I get the tank bag. And I'm hoping I can still see everything. So from here, I can still see the phone with the tank bag on, which is pretty good because then we have the option of using everything. And I can see the screen as well so I can see my speed, my GPS and the phone as well. So that's in a good position. So I think I'll lock that in the place. I picked up these foam handlebar covers from the bike shop just the other day. So hopefully, I'm just gonna be able to pop them on there. They're a little bit too long, so we'll have to trim them down to fit. But first, we have to take off the defensor guards. Hopefully, they should just slide straight over. I don't know, I don't know if people put uh, washing up liquid on these, or ah, it's going on quite well. He says. Yeah. 10 minutes later, they've got that on, just about. They're pretty good then. These are 10 euros and uh, they actually make the handlebar a lot thicker. So I think that might cut down a bit of vibration as well on the hands, which is going to be great. I hope the heated element still That's works it. through it. Yeah. it. We should put them on here. You should cut a pair in are you, half. Oh, you want a pair as well? You could cut them like, you know, like those actually, yeah. Like those noodles. It's yeah. Really noodles. <laughs> come for hand grips although you're not really ever hand holding onto that bit are you no all right now to trim them getting flashbacks of destroying the hand guards on the other bike that's good they look good though they do actually 
because they're about it's about four mil thick so it's increased the diameter by about eight mil so that's that'll make a difference huh? i'm gonna leave this cutting up to you because i don't want that response you don't want to be blamed nope. for that one a little bit long so i'm just going to trim them with a knife and then i'm going to reassemble it back that is your absolute concentration face <laughs> We've actually been in here so long it's gone dark outside. <laughs> Your very quick, uh, let's just do the handles, has yeah. turned into three it hours. Sounds like an easy job, isn't it? They look really great though. They do actually, I wish I'd put them on before. It's the best 10 euro upgrade you can get. So shall I do that side and then are you going to start working on the wiring? Yeah, um, I think we might have to take the tank cover off so we can we can thread the wire neatly underneath because it's pretty tight under here. Okay. Then we're going to go and try and put the Thunderbox in. It's really not the greatest amount of cable no, on here, to be honest. Um, it said that this was the longer cable version if you buy it in the UK, which is why I bought it in the UK, yeah. it says on the website. But as you can see, I need to put that around here. There's just enough cable to connect to the battery. So, I mean, another 100 mil on that would have been a lot more useful, but And there's not so much room underneath the seat either. No, there's a bit of clearance actually under the seat itself. Yeah. Um, I don't want to put anything on here because it looks like it's, it's vented and it might get hot, but there's a little piece of plastic here, which I think we'll just position it on there. But it is very late and it has taken us a very long time to even get this <laughs> far. Getting this off wasn't the easiest thing in the world, but we managed to do it. Yeah. So. You always feel like you're about to break something with plastic, yeah. though. but that's pretty much off now. So tomorrow morning, I think we'll resume, run the wire back in, reconnect that to the battery, and hopefully we're good. But yeah, it's getting rather late, so I think we're going to have dinner and call it a day for today. We'll start again in the morning. All right then. Thank you. Hello. Welcome to Saturday morning. <laughs> oh, it was good last night. We got so much done. Yeah, we got a lot done last night, but we didn't quite finish the bike off. So maybe we can finish that later this afternoon. But this morning we've got an appointment with Helite in Zurich. So we're going to go and see Richie in about an hour or maybe two hours. Yeah, it's not too far, is it, from here? No, I think it's about an hour ride. So well, yeah, we'll take the bike there and go check out the best. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing them. It's going to be really interesting to see how they all work. So we'll go do that now and then come back, finish off the bike, and then we only really need to do packing. Yeah, just the packing. Can we do that tomorrow, do you think? Yeah, but first let's have some coffee and then head off. Good idea. We're here at the Helite showroom. It's not so far from Zurich. We've actually had a lovely ride down today. It's really warm today, but we're gonna go inside the showroom now and take a look at the product. Yeah, we actually saw the product, I think a year ago at the Motor Festival. So it's good to be back here to see if we can get a couple of vests for our new tour. Helite is one of the leaders in airbag technologies. And here at the showroom, we're gonna see all of their products, which is great because they're all on show. This one, I think everyone is familiar with. Uh, I think it was launched last year. This is their airbag backpack. What? Port 9 has done a review on this and it was really, really good. So really impressed with that one. But what we might be interested for our next tour, I think is going to be the standard vest. However, this one is the e-turtle. So it's an electronic one, which I think is going to be better for us yeah. because we're always off and on and off the bike all the time on the M. So we don't want to have to unclip something else. I think that's a good idea. It looks great too. Yeah. They also, they do like the standard lanyard one, which is a bit cheaper. I think it's like 150 cheaper, which also does the job. But as I say, if we're on and off the bike all the time, then that's probably yeah. the best option. So is us. that the difference for us? We're either going to have, a, you can have one that attaches to the bike or electronic. They're the two options. Pretty much, yeah. That's the two options they have. You can have the luminous one, but uh, you know, to the car, match our suits, we'll probably <laughs> go for the black one. But they also do integrated into jackets as well. They're pretty smart. But and I, what's that over there? Is that a track one as well over in the corner? Let's have a look. Ah, uh, yeah. I think we saw that one last time as well. I mean, that's for the racetrack because it has space. It's got the hump, hasn't it, for the back of your track now. That's super cool. Maybe you'll need that for uh, <laughs> Annie Durin this year. Possibly. That is an inflated one now. But what I like about the Helite airbags is the actual volume of air that they inflate with. And I think when it comes up over your shoulders as well, we'll kind of lock your hat in. 
That looks really good. Yeah. Okay. But I think we'll ask the guy, I think Richie is around here somewhere, so we'll ask him to explain a little bit more, a bit more in depth about the product. Okay, Sean. Now I explain you a little bit about uh, canisters, okay, how you yeah. can change them, if in case you have an accident, but I'm sure you, you won't. Hopefully not. No. You, you didn't have it until now, and I'm sure you won't change these. Okay, here you have the two jackets. It's uh, XS and the M would be the right size, which okay. we tried before. And which jacket are these? Is the E turtle? This is the E turtle. And <coughs> I show you. you. To turn on, you push three times this button. Okay. So you take this off, the old one. You take the old out. You put the new one in. And how do you put it in? Very, very easy. You put it in. You just screw it like this. Take it out. You connect it here. It's special that it cannot open by itself. Okay, so it can only go in one. Right. Perfect. You put it in this, like this. You close it. Turn it on. If it's green, you have 25 hours. 25 hours it's on a full charge. Yeah, yep. it's a full charge. That means you don't have to charge it. Sometimes you have different jackets under this. You have a big one in winter yep. time, in summer time. You have a summer jacket, so you can change here the size. You have the possibility to make it bigger or smaller. Oh, okay. yep. That's yep. very good. You can let, it's very, very hot in summer times, you let your jacket open. Right. Yep, and so yep. the wind, it goes through the jacket. Oh, that's nice. And that's so you have the wind that and cools it down. Right. And you're still time. protected yep. and all, because you have these three clips. Put one on you, yeah, that's so you can look, feel yeah. it. You can close it. So you will feel. Normally you know in 80 milliseconds uh, millis it's open. Breast protection. Hip protection, you have a level two uh, protector, and the neck. You know the neck, ah, yep. because if you have an accident, really your head is it's not going yeah. behind. Yeah, even without the helmet on now. Yeah, with the helmet, is, you are fixed, so and, and so that's important if you have an accident. Basically doing the same as a neck brace. Right, that's yeah, it's yep. the same, exactly. And in case you had an accident, you stand up, you feel good, the air is going out yep. very quickly again. Okay. Yep. And if in, even in case you don't feel too good, you say, okay, you know what, I open the jacket and now I feel you free can release again. Yourself, okay. right. Super. You put it by the side, you change the cartouche yep. and you, you follow your way. So you don't need to do anything more after no, it's that's it. Yeah. That's really good. Isn't it? That's really, really cool stuff. It's a fork sensor. You have inside the material to fix it. You have ah, three different sizes for the forks you have. Yep. Depends the size. Then you have here the fork sensor, it's a small piece you put on your motorbike. Okay. Yeah. And you have the utility to put it on. To connect your jacket, this jacket with this fork sensor. And if they are connected, they always talk together. And then from zero on your motorbike, it's, it's secure. Okay. Yep. Because you put it here, if I can show it. Here is an example, a motorbike. You can put it here, for example. And if it's on the motorbike, now the whole motorbike is uh, protected. That means if you have somewhere an impact from behind, off the side, everything, it it's, uh, sends a sign, a signal to your jacket. Okay. And then yeah. in the half of time, that means 40 milliseconds, wow. it's open. Yeah. Direction time, very, very fast. Right, we are back from Helite with the addition of two new vests. I'm super happy with them. Yeah, me too. It looks like we're just in time as well. It looks like a storm or yeah. some rain's about to come in, but these are absolutely great. There's yours, Em. Thank you very much. Uh, we went with the e turtle in the end. Yeah, I think it's the right decision for us with the amount of times that we get on and off the bike. These were the right ones for yeah, us. Yeah, for sure, yeah. And the fact that they lasted 25 hours on a charge Single was charge, yeah. much That's more really than good, we yeah. expected. Even if you're like camped That's one or even two point. nights, you could probably get away with that. So yeah, yeah they're a great choice. And I think they look really good too. Yeah, they do actually. They've got quite like a utilitarian look. Yeah, that's they? right, yeah. So that's great that we've got those sorted. Yeah. So well, we're going to head back down to the garage now and maybe finish off Shadow today. Hopefully we'll be done and then, as we said, hopefully tomorrow will be final packing and then we'll be on our way. Absolutely, looking forward to it. So this afternoon we finally finished the wiring here. We've got the cable for the SP Connect charge unit. It's following the OEM wiring down there and then we're chasing it down the top of the tank there. I think it's the easiest solution. The Thunderbox from Heeltech is installed and this unit is really good because now we've only got three connections to the battery, whereas without this you might have to have like five or six and we've got about six more connections available if you want to add anything at a later date is really simple then you just cut the wire strip off the the cable and put them straight in it's as simple as that so the bike's pretty much ready to go 
I would like to put some protection on here to keep any water out. So I might see if I can pick up something in the week just to, to wrap around all those cables and keep them together. But that's pretty much it for now. We're gonna put the plastic parts back on, put the seats back on, and I think we're ready to go. Can you pass us that tank cover, Em? Yeah. Thanks. These are the back two for here. Definitely, are they? Okay. Can you pass us the wind deflectors, Em? Uh, yeah. Right, I think, These ones. I think they're called wind deflectors, oh. don't they? I don't know what their actual name is. What? We're pretty much back on. Yeah, say, it went all on a lot easier than it I thought, did. to be honest. I thought it'd be a nightmare trying to relocate all the studs. Right, tighten up the rest of them and we're good. Thanks, man. Lastly, gonna put the battery cover on. If you ever take this off, just make sure that these two little grommets here are in the right position. Because last time, this one fell off and landed somewhere inside there. It and took it us ages nightmare. to try and find it. <laughs> yeah, but eventually found it. But yeah, make sure they're in when you put this back on. He's starting to take shape again. <laughs> yeah, what was a very simple job last time. It took forever and a day, didn't it? Are we done? I think so, Ram. Um, let's just push it out of the garage and test it. Probably should have done I that was gonna say before what? we put all the bits back on, but I'm sure it'll work. All right, I'll trust you. Right, let's test this. We need the engine on for the Heeltech box to charge the unit. So okay. I'll pop the, pop the engine on. Put the phone on. It's good. Oh yeah, I think you need a couple of seconds to realize the engine's on. Okay. Send the there, power. We there we go, we're charging now. Yeah. Awesome. Bye bye. Packing is quite a personal thing, so I'm not going to go through each and every item that we take because everyone's going to be different. But after doing this for quite a few years, I've come up with a packing concept that I use on every tour. So I'm going to show you what I mean. Basically what I mean is everything I pack has to match everything I pack. So I'm going to be taking these pants, which are green. So I wouldn't, for instance, also take this green jacket with me as well because I'm never gonna wear them together. So instead I'm gonna take a black jumper that will match and then this black jumper will also match these shorts. Do you know what I mean? So everything has to be interchangeable and it's the same with Sean for instance. I make sure he has like one base color, which for us normally is like this type of green because Sean looks so good in it. And then everything around it is neutrals, so whites, beiges, greys, and that means we can make countless outfits with the items that we take. So I'm just packing now and I need to grab a shirt for Sean. This one is his favorite, so he'll probably wanna take this one. And then along with this, I know that he can wear these pants with it, wear this Patagonia jumper with it. Also, he can wear a pair of shorts with it. And then when I'm picking out t-shirts for him, let's see, I'm gonna pick out one beige, one gray, and one black. And that's probably more than enough t-shirts. On a longer tour, we'd probably only take two. Um, but that way, he's got multiple outfits, so he can wear this top with his shorts, and then the shirt over and everything kind of interchanges. So for me, I'm a little bit more difficult. Um, I always take one little black dress with me on the trips just because I can dress it up or dress it down. If we do date night, I can put on like a little this with a little cardi and go out. Or if I want to dress it down and just have a day in the city, I can do that. But it also means that I make sure that the jacket that I take will match with it. But then one day I'm going to be out hiking or walking or whatever we're doing. I can also wear this with these pants. And then I also take, probably I'll take three t-shirts on this trip. A couple of black t-shirts, a white linen t-shirt if it gets really warm. And that reason is all three of these t-shirts will match with these pants. And if it gets really hot, all three will match 
with these shorts and then these shorts will also match with this jumper and this jumper will also match with my dress. So everything matches and that's how I pack. So when it comes to like shoes and accessories, on the last tour we took these Tropic Feel, um, I can't remember which ones these are, but they were great. Um, so we're taking them again because they go flat and I'll also take a pair of sandals for me um, and maybe a pair of flip flops for Sean, but just something really small. And then for bags, we're taking the Exped. We've taken this on the past three or four tours. It's great. It's basically a big dry sack that's also got rucksack handles on it. So we'll take this and I am taking the same bag I take on every tour, my PackSafe um, bag. So that's going to come with me. And then I just need to pack the cosmetics and I also need to do the um, like the camp cooking equipment. And we're basically ready. Oh, we're also, we also always take, and I will never leave without two down jackets. We've used these Patagonia ones for, I think I've had mine for five years now, and they're the best things. They scrunch down into the sides of the inside pocket and we both have one of these and they always come with us on tour and that's about it really keep it simple and what i do as well is i always keep the what are these called packing cubes i always keep them out so i know that everything that we do take has to fit into one of these um and that's the max we can take so if it doesn't fit in here it can't come we haven't had that problem yet and then we also take one small one and this just has swimming costume underwear and socks in it and that's it. We are nearly ready. I'm just going to pack all of these up, fold them all, and then I'll show you them when they're all in the packing cubes. So this is the final product all packed in. We actually measured these packing cubes to make sure they're the exact size of the pannier. So they do fit perfectly. And this is the pannier liner from Toratec. This is the exhaust exhaust side pannier, I think, the 38 litre one. Um, and these fit directly in the bottom of there completely flat and I was going to take an extra pair of jeans but it doesn't fit in my packing cube so I can't take them <laughs> and then Sean's goes on the top then we have these two little ones they just slot in the side and then I still have so much room and these packing cubes don't actually fill the entire pannier you still have um, a few centimeters of the lid that's empty so you can put um, stuff in the lid and it still will close so I'm going to put in our shoes um, cosmetics and that's about it really because we're not camping on this trip we actually have a lot of room so I'm about done and I'm starting to get really excited for this tour now this is the cooking equipment we'll be taking we've got our pan set as always it's, it's stainless steel from MSR with a couple of plates underneath Got our Snow Peak insulated mugs, which keeps the drinks nice and warm, and they're super light as well. Good thing is these actually stack as well. What else have we got here? We've got our titanium sporks, lightweight, really strong as well. Open all knife, which is a great little knife, really cheap as well, and it locks into place so the blade stays where you want it. We've got the pour for the bottom of the stove, and what else? We have the grinder here. Bit of a luxury as ever, but this will give us fresh coffee throughout the trip which we're going to use with this new filter that we've bought. We tested this the other day and it makes a great coffee. So that's pretty much what we're taking. But there's one more thing that's going to be new, and that's Em's toaster. I can't believe she convinced me to buy this, but this is the Primus toaster. And apparently it just fits on the stove like that and you can actually toast bread. But this is going to fall in the luxury category along with the coffee grinder. Shadow is pretty much ready for tomorrow. So I'm just grabbing the panniers because we also pack now. We're just going to take the panniers upstairs and put the rest of the clothes in them. Because tomorrow we're going to head off. We're going to head south down to France just by Evian, I think. And then the day after that, we're going to head further south again and catch the ferry to Corsica.